My name is Joel Nyman, and welcome to our presentation on multi-physics topology optimization and the design of high-performance injection molds. I would like to also recognize my colleagues, Dr. Tung Wu and Dr. Andres Tovar, who helped me carry out this research. And so a little bit more about us. We are all from um, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. It's a joint campus between IU and Purdue, and we are there with Purdue's mechanical engineering department. Um, I am a third year PhD student um, under Dr. Tovar. Tung is one of our former mechanical engineering PhD students who recently graduated in May 2019. Um, and he now works at Simmons. And our advisor, Dr. Andres Tovar, is an associate professor of mechanical engineering at IEPY. And he is also the director of the Engineering Design Research Laboratory. And overall, the lab, um, as a lab, we focus on a variety of different design uh, methodologies and research from a generative design to Bayesian based optimization and machine learning to topology optimization, which would include like multi physics and um, multi scale. And so let's get started um, on the presentation. We're gonna look at the contents first. First, we're just gonna look at some of the models and methods um, that go with multi-physics topology optimization, specifically for heat exchanger design. Um, we'll look at thermal fluid accordingly. We'll look at the general uh, joint sensitivity analysis and just a simple derivation that's um, applicable to a wide variety of uh, multi-physics problems. And then we're going to look at how we can apply a thermal fluid multi-physics topology optimization method to an example, and then also look at how that can be used for injection mold cooling and the final results of that. So multi-physics topology optimization is a numerical design approach to optimally distribute material within a prescribed volume to find a structural layout with maximized performance utilizing coupled multi-physics models. And so when it comes to <clears throat> heat exchangers or cooling systems and injection tooling, uh, solid mechanics, heat transfer, fluid mechanics, um, these are the physics models that are most relevant. And um, they all have their sub branches um, within them. So like linear elasticity or nonlinear plasticity for solid mechanics. Uh, but then they also have their coupled models between them. And this is where it actually gets to multi-physics. So like thermal mechanical, thermal fluid, fluid structure, and thermal fluid structure. And so we will be mainly dealing with the uh, thermal fluid multi-physics topology optimization models. So when it comes to multi-physics topology optimization methods, specifically ones for thermal fluid, um, underneath thermal fluid, you can have two different ones that are, one, some are thermal-based methods and some are fluid flow-based methods. And so in the thermal-based methods, the governing equation is the steady state heat, uh, heat equation. And this, the model is an approximation of the conjugate heat transfer model. And as such, the thermal convective coefficients are approximated. Um, this does let it be easily coupled with uh, linear elastic analysis. And we can see an example of that on the right-hand side here. Uh, we have, the, on the upper side, we have a heat exchanger design with no mechanical load. Um, we just have a, we have a flux over the design domain and, and a sink on the bottom. And you can see the resulting design from that. And then on the bottom side of it, we have the same problem set up, but this time we prescribe a pressure on the top of mechanical loading, and you can see how the design uh, changes from there. And uh, the, on the other hand, we have these fluid flow-based multi-physics topology optimization methods. And these are governed by the Navier-Stokes equation. And if they're uncoupled, for uncoupled versions of this, um, the thermal fluid model um, adds a thermal analysis component to the objective function. However, you can also have it be coupled, and this can be done through the fluid's velocity, and you, we will look at how we, how we do that on the next slide. And so looking at the, at the fluid flow model of a thermal fluid multi-physics topology optimization program, we see that it is governed by the Navier-Stokes equation and the continuity equations. In order to interface this with topology optimization, we add a uh, inverse permeability term. And this is used to penalize the uh, solid phase of topology. And so that's this term right here. We add this term to the Navier-Stokes equation. Um, and this alpha is uh, an, an interpolated uh, term that is used to, to scale, if you will, the, uh, the inverse permeability term from, from zero to one. And so if we look in the upper right here, 
we have um, for a given fluid fraction element, um, which is our design variable that we'll be solving for, and which ra these range from zero to one for a given fluid fraction element theta, we can have a corresponding alpha. And you will see that if theta equals zero, which is our uh, solid domain, we will have alpha equal to one. And so we will have this, this negative term that's, that's taking away from our Navier Stokes and it will be penalizing the velocities in it. If our theta, however, is equal to one, then alpha equals zero. And this term drops out and we're left with the original Navier Stokes uh, equation. So for just pure fluid flow in the domain. The heat transfer model is uh, governed by the general convective heat transfer equation. And here we can see the, the coupling take place with this, with this U term this convective term, and that is that will be that will be found and, and used from the from the fluid flow model, and then we also have the Prandtl number that that it will be used later on too, and so the governing equations that we just saw these can be discretized um, with the Galerkin method and the divergence theorem, and we obtain these these two different um, sets of equations uh, for the finite element analysis, and so we have this KFU equals FB. This is uh, for the fluid flow model, and it's the flow stiffness matrix multiplied by a vector of velocity and pressures, U, big U, and then we have a fluid body force vector. The equivalent of that for the heat transfer model is KT times T equals Q. This is the thermal stiffness matrix multiplied by the temperatures um, is equal to the flux. And so we can uh, put this into a thermal fluid um, optimization problem that maximizes the heat dissipation of the structure subject to a fluid volume constraint and it also must satisfy the constitutive governing equations for fluid flow and heat transfer that we have on the left hand side there and so this equation looks like um, or this can be written out as we have here we're trying to find the design variables the uh, this fluid fraction theta and we're minimizing the objective function C, which is uh, Q transpose times T. This is, the, this is to maximize the heat dissipation of the structure. And then we have our, our constraints as listed. Before we apply that to an example problem though, I wanna go over this general adjoint sensitivity analysis. And this is um, very useful for multi-physics. You can use it for a wide range of MPTO problems, um, whether they're coupled or uncoupled, strongly or weakly. Um, this 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 formulaic um, method can be applied, and so we can start by taking a system of equations and posing them as a residual R. And so in that we have this uh, a s minus b equals zero, and a is our coefficient matrix. This would be equivalent to like our k. S is our vector of state variables, and this would be like our big U or our T. And then minus B is our forcing vector. So this would be like the fluid body force. And then we can define the Lagrangian. So this is your objective function plus this adjoint variable vector, uh, lambda, transpose, and that is multiplied into the residual. And so we have this Lagrangian. We can take the total derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the design variable theta. And you get uh, these two terms. You, you get one that's multiplied by lambda, uh, lambda, transposed and the other one that is just free and we can rewrite these um, so that we have this term the derivative of the state variables with respect to the design variable we have this term and then we also have the other terms and so what ends up happening is this term becomes the adjoint problem and then the, what's remaining is our final sensitivities which we have down there and so these are the sensitivity coefficients that you get from the a joint method. And so we can apply the thermal fluid multiphysics topology optimization problem to uh, this example that we have here. We, we will start with the design domain. We have uh, omega here and it is surrounded by this no slip insulated wall. Um, with the exception of along that wall, we have this inlet and outlet and the inlet's defined with a pressure and a temperature, and the outlet's defined with just a pressure. So this is a pressure-driven flow we have. And then over the design domain, we have a flux, a heat flux. And so looking at our example here on the right, uh, we have an inlet on the left, a uniform inlet on the left with a pressure and a temperature 
of one and zero respectively. We have an outlet on the right with a pressure of zero, and then we have a flux over the whole thing. So let's see how we, the results of this, of the seat exchanger design. And so if we synthesize and run it for three different Prandtl numbers, and these correspond to um, a couple of different common fluids, we will see that um, the following topologies that we have here. These were done for a 60 by 60 mesh. The density filter radius that we used in the optimization was 2% of that edge length, so of that 60. The penalty parameter is 0.25. The volume fraction is uh, 0.5. And then the thermal conductivity is set to 0.01. And the dynamic viscosity is set to 1. And so well, the first thing that you may notice is the at higher Prandtl numbers, we have much more complex, intricate, and narrower um, flow channels. And then as you come down to the lower Prandtl numbers, you have much wider flow channels. You can also see on the right-hand side here that our final convergence after 100 iterations is um, much lower with higher Prandtl numbers. And this goes up as you, as you decrease the Prandtl number. So we actually have more um, better performing designs with higher Prandtl numbers. And this can be attributed to the fact that at a higher Prandtl number, we have a higher heat capacity fluid. And this affords the design domain to have a slower flowing fluid. We have a, and, and thus we can have more intricate um, flow channels, spread the heat out over the design domain better. And, uh, but overall you will have slower flow. Um, and this results to a better performance. At lower Prandtl numbers with lower heat capacity fluids, you don't have this ability to do that. And so since it's such a low heat capacity fluid, you need to have a faster flow rate. And so you can see that at lower Prandtl numbers, we have these little bigger channels, higher flow rates. You can see that over here on the velocity as it just, as we decrease Prandtl number, we have to, we increase our velocity to find their optimal design. And so there you can see that how the how the method is working um, through a variety of different uh, fluid parameters. And so if we apply this to uh, the injection mold cooling, um, we we have this problem here. We have uh, this cooling system, and we're trying to replace the original one, which is just this baffle array cooling system, and we want to replace it with this conformal cooling system. And so on the right hand side, we 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 choose a cylinder close to the injected part and we define this as the morphological surface. And that's this gray cylinder you see on the right uh, picture. And half of the cylinder is flattened and considered to be the design domain, which is 80 by 60 millimeters. And the inlet and outlet uh, both have a diameter of four centimeters. And then one of the very important criteria of this is it needs to be uh, symmetrical. It needs the inlet and the outlet need to be able to be swapped. And so we will look at how we can address that. And so the way we do address that actually is through uh, multi-load cases. We have problem one, this P1, where you have this um, you have this inlet, you have this outlet. So and then on the little, on the inlet on the left, outlet on the right. You have this problem two where it's just the same flip-flopped inlet on the left, inlet on the right, outlet on the left, and we can combine the, both of these to get a multi-load case symmetrical problem. And we will be putting this through the same optimization problem statement that we had before with the other example. And so initial results of this, um, we see right away that if you look at the results, if you just use uh, the first problem, so, so P1 where we have the inlet on the left, outlet on the right, you will see we get an unsymmetrical design. Um, however, if we use it with the symmetric boundary condition in the multi-load case, we will see that we have this, this nice symmetric design. And this was done with a 60 by 80 mesh. Um, the penalty parameter was 0.25, the volume fraction was 0.37, and the Prandtl number was 7.56. One problem with this design though is we have these blocked flow channels here. You can see them over here. And we also have unequal flow throughout um, this entire design. We have different flow rates that go through these channels. And so we'll look at how we can address that and, and further optimize the design. And so we want to we want to define it so that each of these flow channels have an equal velocity. And and one of the ways we can do that is we take a slice through the design domain that we were given, and we select these pipe sections along there, the flow channels along there, and we just just prescribe them a uniform but equal velocity along the whole thing. 
and that is and that is what our u is not uniform but we have we have an identical velocity across all of them we can define this second and an, an additional optimization problem and where we're given this theta c star that is our um, our initial result from before and we define our velocities like i already mentioned and then we just optimize this this objective function, this um, FB transpose times U, this is the minimization of energy uh, dissipation due to the viscous effects. And the way this can effectively be thought of is as pressure drop, you're minimizing pressure drop. That is not um, really applicable to this problem because we have a constant pressure defined across. So there is no minimization of pressure drop. Um, however, um, that is a useful interpretation, especially if you're doing a velocity uh, based inlet and outlet. And then again, we're also, we're trying to find the, uh, the fluid de um, design, the fluid densities, and we're subject to our governing equations and volume fraction constraint. And so if we run that, we get this design over here on the right-hand side, we get this B, and we have uh, these nice clean flow channels, and they all should have the same velocity throughout them. So let's verify that that was actually successful and con convert this to a 3D design too. And so we can convert this to a 3D design. We, we do this by using a series of sketches and sweeps and service morphs, and we can get this design up here in the upper right. And then we can just do a, qu a quick and simple test here. We give it a velocity inlet and, and, and a pressure outlet, and we just solve to see what is our velocity profile inside of the design domain. And if you look here at this middle plot, we can see that it is all more or less consistent. We have very consistent velocities throughout the entire region, which is 0.5 here. And so let's look at the final results and compare those to the, to the baffle array. The original design, the baffle array design, had a uh, maximum part surface temperature of 75 and a minimum of 41 degrees Celsius. The average was 60.7 and the total cycle time was 54 seconds. For the optimized conformal cooling, we had a, a part surface temperature that had a maximum of 73 and a minimum of 30 degrees Celsius. And then the average was 46 degrees C with a cycle time uh, nine seconds faster at 45 seconds. And so um, this was a product that was able to be 3D printed and actually put into test. And here we have a video uh, of the part in use, of the mold in use, and um, the actual time on on this whole cycle is actually a little bit even a little bit even shorter than what mold flow um, was predicting here too. And it's about it's about thirty something seconds, I think thirty six seconds. And there we see the final final part being being popped off. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this presentation on multi-physics topology optimization and the design of high-performance heat exchangers. The authors, you know, we would like to acknowledge the National Science Foundation, and we would like to especially thank um, Hanno from Autodesk, who helped us with our licensing for Moldflow, and he also invited us to participate in the summit. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for listening, and uh, stay safe.